Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kasha. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. I always like doing these sessions. Uh, so yeah, thank you for taking it, the time out to join. Uh, just to introduce myself quickly, uh, my name's my name's uh, Nikhil. I am the um, um, I've, I've been a founder twice now. Um, I founded my first company in 2019. Uh, my second company late uh, late last year. Um, the second comp the, the first company was a health tech uh, company that utilizes vision for monitoring in healthcare. Um, and that is now uh, grown quite a bit to serve customers across US, Europe and Asia Pacific. And my second company is a um, is a tool uh, that IT service desk use to autonomously solve tickets, uh, retrieve information very quickly. And it does use a lot of the uh, the generative AI framework. And more importantly, uh, that second uh, company utilizes a a proprietary framework we built for operating autonomous agents, which I think is just one of the most fascinating spaces uh, right now in, in the world of generative AI. Yeah, so a bit of background. So that was just a bit of background about me. I am um, a, a technical founder, so I love doing these. Uh, I guess most of the people on this uh, call may be technical. So like I love going into the technical side of of what you can do to actually build a product, but not only build a product, actually get a product ready to take to market so someone will pay for it. And, and that's really the idea. I think I'm trying to spend less time talking about what cool tools to use on Azure and more time on like, how do you reverse engineer the customer problem, build a solution very quickly, and then get them to pay for it? Because that is really the the, the key formula for success um, in any early stage company, uh, rather than just spending maybe days uh, building a product. So in this session, I, I wanted to do something a bit different. And um, this is going to be an unusual session for me. It'll be the first time I try it, but I, I wanted to, to try something different today. Um, when, when I when I did my sessions last time, I I, I usually go through um, all of the the tools you can use on the Azure Cognitive Services Suite. That that aside from Azure OpenAI, this does include computer vision, speech recognition, other cognitive tools or API anomaly detection, all that kind of stuff. Um, other tools you could use to build a product to solve some customer problem. Um, I, one of the first uh, one of the first ideas we did is um, build out, define a problem to kind of build what I guess Microsoft Copilot is building now. Um, it's a tool to automatically index all of your emails in your inbox and then automatically reply uh, to uh, specific emails in the Outlook inbox. And we uh, kind of mapped out what the solution would look like. It would have the solution would have to be a tool that automatically reads emails, categorize emails, and then generate suggested responses. Um, to be able to do that, it need to be able to his index all of your historical emails, store them in a vector database, and uh, semantically retrieve similar ones so that it could generate uh, reasonable responses. And then what I did is define a target market uh, for for this type of uh, for this type of product, um, just so we can keep in mind who we actually who would actually use this type of end product. And, and really, we realized it'd be a pretty young uh, founder of a startup um, who's always busy, uh, and they would be the typical buyer persona. So identifying this is something that I think a lot of people miss when building a generative AI tool for, for their company, um, they really need to have always the, 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 the target market in mind. Um, and then we kind of just built out the entire architecture. So, and the architecture included authenticating with uh, Outlook using the Microsoft Graph API, getting all of the emails, uh, passing them using regex expression, uh, generating classifications and generating responses 
And so you have a entrepreneur who could be super hyper productive, um, doesn't have to spend multiple time going through their emails. And so really, that's what I wanted to um, that, that that this is the the type of product I wanted to um, kind of the, the path, the thinking path that we went on to build this type of product. But what what I wanted to do today is actually. I really want for anyone in the audience to take away something actionable that they can use uh, or, or they could use to actually go ahead and build a product or develop an idea that you already have. Um, so I did want to open, I did want to actually ask someone in the audience right now is if you do have a generative idea, um, if you can put your hand up, if you have one idea, it, does, it doesn't have to be fully fledged out. Um, if you do have one idea for a generative AI startup, what I wanted to do is actually reverse engineer. What do we need to do to actually get that to a stage where it's MVP ready? You have some idea of who's going to actually buy that product. So you can come away from this session and actually say, I, I have a lot of information or I, I'm armed with the knowledge required to actually go and take this to market. So I did want to um, kind of give you the chance to put me on the spot to, I guess, for me to be your colleague for the next, um, uh, for, for, for this session or however long we have, um, to actually see how do we take an idea and how would we execute it on Azure or using Azure OpenAI um, how do we build out the architecture behind it? And then how do we take it to market? And who do we identify as the uh, buyer persona? So I am going to put someone on the spot here. Does anyone want to put their hand up first with maybe an idea they have and they just want to share it with the with the floor? Yep, we can hear you. I have a business idea uh, on uh, my business name is Voice Guard AI. It's all Voice about AI. Uh, okay. It's all about uh, realizing uh, online security. You see, in our digital age, the threat of voice and face cloning is the rise. Imagine someone being able to replicate your voice and face, and we use them for malicious purposes, like mm -hmm. uh, imper frauds and uh, real cons uh, frauds and yeah. scams. Uh, in earlier days, we see uh, in US a uh, lot of uh, these cases are rising very much. Uh, so the uh, so voice guard AI, the product I am working on, uh, uh, cutting edge AI technology to analyze unique vocals and facial patterns, uh, instantly uh, distinguish between the real you and any potential clone. It's like mm -hmm. a personal digital guardian ensuring your online interaction are, are uh, secure basically mm. so my vision is to make an internet safer place for all uh, and yeah. love to discuss the, this idea further with you and insight thought about how uh, we can achieve the goal what do you think that makes sense and then uh where where are you at this stage with your idea have you uh looked to develop an mvp or are you just still brainstorming right now uh i uh i just uh build a simple interface of this but it's not uh uh doing real-time uh voice detection so it's mm -hmm. basically upload voice and then it detects but i want to make a real-time detection and real-time face cloning detection so uh, okay. Fantastic. So you're so just just so I have um, just so I understand this, your idea is to be able to detect um, essentially deep fakes. Uh, yes. Be yes. able to detect deep fakes. Uh, so to reduce fraud, like for example, is it, this is a big problem. Of course, anyone can use um, anyone can use uh, generative AI to. Uh, or deep fake technology to replicate or seem as if they were someone with their voice in video um, to either try and authenticate a bank transfer, for example. Um, yes. So that pain leads to loss of money. So this is a big problem, especially in this day and age with 
um, with the advancements of generative AI. So um, that's great. Let's try and go over that. Um, before we do, I do want to uh, give Kumar the chance to as well share his idea. Hey, hi, hi everyone. Hey, Kumar. Yeah, hi. My idea is very simple, uh, and and uh, I got it on the fly. I'm not sure uh, if. Uh, for example, I have my email at gmail.com, and this is very, very, you know, uh, uh, important. Nowadays, there are a lot of spams all the time coming to my email address, and uh, uh, at times, people have given kumar at gmail.com as their recovery email or something like that. So those kind of emails are spamming me all the time, and this is my very uh, special email address. I want uh, I, I, and. From from HS, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to create some small tool uh, with the with the AI technology, which will protect my email address uh, from all these uh, unwanted emails coming in my inbox. So this is quite relatively very simple problem, but I mean a very simple uh, scenario. But I guess there are many people uh, who will be looking forward for that kind of tool or solution. I'm not sure whether this is already solved problem, but yeah, yeah, yeah sure. If, if you can. No problem. Yeah. So are you saying, uh, come on, just so I understand you, are you saying you're looking for something more of like an advanced spam filter for your email? Is that what you're describing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then your your problem is you're getting a lot yes, of these emails um, coming through to you, uh, which are actually going past the current spam filters, and you need to be able to uh, sort them effectively. Yes, yes, that's correct. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, great. Fantastic. We'll, we'll, we'll also try and uh, brainstorm exactly how we would architect that product. And um, yeah, so thanks, Kumar. Great, great for thinking about that on the fly. Great job. Um, Bhavan, we got one from you. Yeah, hi. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Well, Nikhil, I'm not very sure that uh, it's going to use Azure OpenAI. Uh, mm -hmm. That's I've been, okay. I've been thinking. Um, uh, since last one month, how I can progress, but given a chance, uh, uh, the, um, I'd just like to use this opportunity to share this idea and try and leverage if there is any. Uh, well, yeah. it is something related to uh, the medical field, uh, basically okay. um, on the drug side. So we often see uh, that there is, a, there is an ISI uh, hallmark on every of your equipment. Uh, but you do not find it there in the in the drug industry. Uh, so I want to make something which is um, which is uh, you know more authentic, and people or a layman a layman people like seventy five percent of majority of our population do not uh, um, you know do not know that whether it is authentic or not. Though um any drug which comes in a market uh, has been certified by cmg but there's there's never any hallmark uh, over uh, on that drug side so just thinking loud uh, of course there are a lot of processes and things mm -hmm. uh, but certainly there could be some use cases where we can leverage uh, this azure open ai uh, use cases but i'm not pretty sure on this nickel i'm still brainstorming and still talking to people um that's so good that's good ideas yeah so. no problem no problem it's good that you're still in the brainstorming stage of this and and thanks for sharing that so like and, and how would uh, who would be your your target market for this type of uh that'd use case be, that'd be all pharmaceutical organizations um, okay and uh, all the distributors and, and what's exactly like what's their current pain right now the pain point is uh that mass of people like uh, India is a population of like 1.4 billion people, right? And uh, yeah. unless you are a literate person who knows about pharmaceutical companies like Glenmark or maybe um, CIPLA, for example, um, mm -hmm. you get to know that uh, the, these guys are the one who are the manufacturer of your drugs. Um, mm. When it comes to the to the medical shop. Um, they th there isn't any any sort of uh, uh, hallmark. So if I say uh, I'm 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 a person from a village, I may mm. not be knowing this uh, this or these organization. All I need all I know that you know this is this is a, this is authentic uh, medicine, and I mm. would take it irrespective uh, that you know there are 
um, there, there are certain events wherein, you know, people um, have bought the medicine and uh, unfortunately the medicine was not correct or not right and they ultimately suffered to some medical um, <clears throat> uh, issues because of that consumption of the drug. So I want to, wanted to do it in a more authentic uh, way, uh, mm. in more um, sort of that area wherein uh, the 75% of our people uh, would buy it seeing that hallmark. Okay, if this hallmark is there, which means it is very authentic, which means that I can go it even my blindfolded eyes. So right, that's, right. that is something which I want to, I do not know if, if it is achievable or not, but still I'm just uh, talking to people and, uh, you know, and of course, in a way, uh, we can definitely think of in that. So, <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. So, so do you have like a, I mean, I'm, and I'm, I'm not uh, too familiar about this problem, but uh, do you find that there are there are a lot of people that are purchasing drugs which are maybe not authentic or, or pretending to be authentic? Is there a lot of fraud in this space? Yeah. So um, I have heard of, in the news and uh, I have also spoken to a couple of medical folks and uh, they are actually uh, buying this and saying uh, yes, there there are certain cases uh, wherein you know people have gone into and they suffered a lot. So I ah, thought okay. uh, I thought this could be one way um, you know wherein uh, can happen, but it it's a long going process, Nikhil. To be honest, sure, uh, sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, just just delving into it and in a way, as I mentioned, I would like to introduce uh, the new technology. Uh, being an Azure enthusiast, I myself was an Azure certified person. Um, yeah. So yeah, let, let's see how it works. But since you've asked, so Fantastic. I thought that this one. Yeah, that's good. I think like that one, um, you know, by the way, Azure OpenAI doesn't solve everything, right? You have yeah. to, um, you know, there's, there's different stacks on Azure to, to solve a problem. Azure yeah. OpenAI yeah. Like, might, may not be the best. Um, but like, and this like requires some form of authentication method. Like, how do you authenticate that actually a drug is um, from a reputable pharmaceutical, or how do you stamp this this uh, this drug with a um, with some form of authentication? Um, that I'm not too sure about, but but yeah, we can explore it anyway. Um, so that's great, by the way. Great three great ideas so thank you for sharing them um so Annika, when coming coming back to your first idea which is all about uh fraud uh all about fraud detection and especially deep fake detection one of the main challenges um i guess you'll face is collecting a lot of data uh to be able to support the efficacy so are you currently utilizing um anything on azure right now to to be able to build that product Mm, no, it's uh, just an idea, and I, guess, uh, I only work on a voice, not face. So it's um, just an idea. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. So you have actually worked on the voice piece. So based on like synthetically generated audio, um, you have like some form of product which is able to detect whether this is coming from a fake or not. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. So. Like if we look at if we look at exactly how do we architect something something like this, um, this is a really great use case because you have basically yeah. multi. Sorry, say okay. that again, Annika. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you jumped in to say something. No, no, no. I just okay. Up my... This is like a great use case because you you're essentially having multimodal. Uh, by the way, can any, can everyone see my graph space here? Hopefully you can. Um, Mikhail and Ankas, I'm sorry before you proceed ahead. Uh, by any way, can we record the session? Or yes, yeah, recorded. It's recorded. Thanks. Yeah. Great. So, so this is a really interesting use case from Anika because it's a, it requires it's this is multimodal detection. So we essentially have a video. Um, and we also have audio, which is really interesting. And those have to go through two different levels of detection. Uh, so we have essentially um, 
let's just call this a video of someone talking. Now, the issue the issue right now is that uh, this video of someone talking, I mean, this is a big problem in, in today's day and age. This video of someone talking, this could be, um, there are different ways to even bank, banking digital applications right now. Uh, they have to, uh, they sometimes require you to take a video of yourself talking. Um, and, and that is to verify, that is to verify who you say you are. So essentially what, we're doing with this use case is we're splitting splitting video of someone talking into video and audio. So we have two separate pro problems here. Uh, so for this solution to work effectively, uh, we need to be able to detect whether this um, whether the video is deep fake, deep fake or not. Two different detection problems here, deep fake or not, and then also audio whether audio is uh, deep fake or not. Now, m most of the most of the research in this area um, of deep fake detection has been on the video side. There hasn't been like much on the audio side. So like Aniket, it's great that you're working, you're attacking this from both angles. We both have video here and also audio. Essentially, it's the same problem, deep or synthetically, uh, synthetically generated. That's really the question. Now, to be able to uh, to be able to if, if you already actually started work on the audio side to be able to get this part working really effective. Um, let's just call this a video detection module and. An audio. Audio detection. Module. Uh, so to get this this video detection uh, module working really, really well. Um, and again, this is this is this is like kind of aside from Azure OpenAI. This is actually a computer vision, a traditional computer vision problem. The way we would do it, let's say this is just an idea. We're just scratching this on the surface. The way we would do this is we'd first need to to ensure that we're building two modules which are working really effectively to detect if this is a deep fake or not, or whether this audio detection is synthetically generated. Um, if it's yes, then let's say we would give this a, um, let's call it plus one deep fake score. If it's yes, so we could have yes, and then also we could do the same here. Plus one uh, deep fake, and we could say. Yes, if this is a deep fake, we, we plus plus one score. And then like quite simply, the entire solution is. Uh, deep fake, let's say deep fake score greater than or equal to two. And then if yes. We can present the customer with a deep fake score. Yes, definitely. A spoof. Right, and this is like in, from a very simplistic level. This is how you would take an input of a video, run this detection. Right, the the way you actually rank uh, the scores could be different, and the way you implement this logic could be different. Uh, but this is like the general way, um, uh, the the general way you'd architect something like this. And really, your customer only cares about your customer for this. And let's take and let's take an example for for a customer. Maybe we're talking about these digital applications, which do require video and audio authentication, right? We we can supply directly to them a tool to help prevent fraud, because if they are authenticating people that are generating videos uh, synthetically, then they will become bankrupt as a business because they are letting too many fraudulent applications uh, come in. So right now, customer cares about the video of someone talking and what they get. They don't care about they don't care about how you do this, um, although that's important for you, but they care about, can you take a video and detect it's a spoof? I, and this is a great use case. I think um, I think Revolut do do this to some extent. So we've, we've already identified, there's actually a bunch of customers that can, um, that can benefit from this type of solution. Now the whole, but the challenge is really, how do you get uh, the video detection module 
um, an audio detection module working really well. Um, this one requires, like both of these require uh, some, some training uh, over an existing data set. So the way you do this, the way you develop something like this is you have to then take a, uh, uh, a data set and this data set should should at least I would say to build an MVP for this type of computer vision model, uh, you would need to take at least 100 videos to start with. It's not a lot. Um, you would ideally need to have 50% of them uh, real, 50% uh, of them fake. That would be my ideal my my ideal split. In reality, you can never get a 50-50 split, maybe 20-80. Um, but this would be my ideal spit. You take a data set, 100 videos um, of person talking to camera. And there are there are quite a bit online. There are actually a few, even if we were to go to Google and say uh, deep fake uh, data set. Um, yeah, great. Like there, there are loads of machine learning data sets, even with, on papers with code. Uh, this is great. Face forensic. So I would take this face. For, this has a thousand original video sequences. This is great. I would take this type of tool, uh, this type of data set. Um, the data set is publicly available. Uh, there's even some code which is publicly available, which is great. I wonder if we can actually take this. Um, yeah, there's some publicly available uh, code even on GitHub. Um, so what I would do is I would just make a note to say, OK, potentially there's some public repo for this. And by the way, don't feel don't feel afraid to go and pull down, clone a public repo and try and get this to run um, on the first instance. Don't be afraid of doing that. That's actually a pretty good strategy, uh, especially when right now the goal is to make sure we're building out a solution which a customer will care about and actually pay for. So our goal is to try and get to that point as quick as possible. Um, you will need to obviously do some more work on, on, on this type of repo. Well, I would take this public repo. Now we actually have even better than a, a hundred videos. We have a thousand videos of a person talking to a camera. Uh, I don't know what the split is between how many are real and how many are fake, um, but a thousand videos is a good enough data set, especially if you if you want to get 50% or 50 of them that are real and 50% are fake. You would then feed those videos through um you would then need to train a, a machine learning model and you could do this i really am a massive fan of azure machine learning studio um it's a great way um it's a great way if you're not familiar with it i would definitely recommend checking this out um you could go to azure uh, machine learning uh, studio it's a really good way to not only train models, but actually deploy models. Um, you can have specific jobs running, which which essentially a job is like an experiment. Um, you can even have models that are saved. Uh, you can even have endpoints as well. So you can do everything from training to deploying an endpoint. So I would go straight directly to machine Azure Machine Learning Studio. Um, I would take, let's say, ingest just the data set and um and train a model and what you would have to do to to actually train a model is you can ingest the whole video um and you can train a a cnn to run across the video and detect whether it's uh, a fake uh, video or real video um or you could actually you could actually select specific frames from the video and then run the detection on those frames. Uh, both approaches actually would work pretty well. Um, so once you've gone ahead and ingested the data set and trained the model, which is super easy to do. So definitely, I would say one takeaway is to uh, look at, I'll put this link in the chat so anyone can, can look at this. That's great. So um, by the way, we have one, um, we have a couple of questions. I want to make sure they're answered here. Uh, so one from Sohel. I do want to make this as interactive possible. So um, Sohel, you mentioned most defects are still struggling to align video and audio together. The video could be very crisp and there might not be any significant uh, sign in audio as well. 
But if you check the lip exam, for example, and compare it with audio, you can easily, yeah. So th this is a, a great reason why this multimodal use of detection for deep fake is a great tool, like not just using video, but also using audio together. That's um, that's a great point. Um, so Sudesh asks, is ML enough for this use case or should we use Azure OpenAI here? Um, in some cases, I would actually recommend in this case, Azure OpenAI may not be uh, the, the best case for this. In fact, you always want to try and don't think of generative AI as the end goal. Think of just what you could use to get your product to market. So a traditional machine learning model would, would, would work pretty well. So what you could do with Azure Machine Learning Studio, going back to this, is we can ingest the data set, again, this data set from here, and we could train the model. And then we could use Machine Learning Studio to actually deploy, serve this model. This is really key. A lot of the uh, machine learning models don't make it into production. And so ML Studio helps, uh, helps to solve this problem. So serve, serve the model via an, a REST API, super easy. And the way that works is once you're ready to deploy, you have an endpoint, um, you have your Swagger URI, uh, it's really, really easy to even test as well. Um, and you can see logs from the endpoint. It's just a really great, uh, it's a really great, you have your REST endpoint here. This one is currently not uh, deployed, which is why it's null, but um, it's just a really great way to, to serve your, your models. So going back to this point, we've got to this stage where we're still working on the video detection model. We've now picked up a data set, a thousand videos of, of a person talking to a camera, a bunch of them are real, a bunch of them are fake. We're feeding that use into Azure Machine Learning Studio to ingest the data set and train a model um, to detect. And really the model is to detect either, it's a binary it's a binary classification to de detect either, let's call it zero, not deep fake, deep fake or one deep fake. And then we can actually serve the model via REST API, uh, which is great. So now this video detection model is now ready. It's being served. It's trained. Uh, hopefully there's enough uh, accuracy within this model uh, to be able to serve it. Um, so now what we could do is at the point of detection, we can call this REST API. So we have now a customer feeding us a video in our video detection model during our decision cycle of whether this is a deep fake or not, we can call the REST API and the REST API will give us um, a, an output as to whether this is a deep fake or not. Uh, by the way, I'm conscious we have a few questions. Let's just answer them before we carry on. So I think, um, Akil, you had a question? Okay, you're on mute if you if you did want to say something. Oh, okay, potentially not. Um, no problem. So we can just going back to this whole whole piece here. We've got the video detection model, deep fake or not, and we could serve the model via REST API. And here we're getting our prediction. And we could use this prediction to feed the score of whether this is a if we're marking this a score of one, we could just, for simplicity's sake, we can mark this as a score of one for a deep fake, zero for not. Um, and the same, by the way, applies for the audio detection module. So we have to then do the same process of finding a data set um, of synthetically generated audio. And I don't know them off the top of my head, but let's say deep fake generated audio data set. I'm making something up right now. Um, oh, perfect. We got wave. OK, great. And we even have some code with it. Even better. Wave fake. So uh, I would go back to our diagram and say, OK, we now actually have a data set to play with for audio. So we could just say audio data set. And this data set, let's see how, how big this uh, data set is. 
so th this is the whole trick, guys. Is it's always using open source data sets or repositories uh, to get to market as quick as possible. Um, let's see if there's any information on how many uh, how many audio audios are within here. Uh, let's have a look. We can go to experiments. OK, so it actually looks like they pulled a bunch of data sets, which is quite cool. OK, it's not exactly clear how many audio samples there are, but it, I, I assume this would be enough to start with. And so now we have a data set of. Audio clips. Some are, let's say some are real. <coughs> some are generated. And we could use this audio clip. And then we perform the same the same path uh, for this for, for this audio detection module. Uh, and I won't repeat it, but it's the same path where we are taking in um, a data set. We're feeding that into Azure Machine Learning Studio, ingesting the data and training a model. And by the way, these are two different modes of inputs, right? We have video modality, so we need a model that is able to ingest a video input and spit out a deep fake. And here we have an audio model. Um, and there are many ways, by the way, to uh, to train a, um, a a model from scratch, which is super easy. Uh, you can actually click new audio, uh, new automated ML job. Um, and you could go through and you could specify what is your task type, what is the data, um, and we could feed in this data. What are the task settings? Uh, computer is just a general setting where you want this model to run um, or where you want this experiment to run. But you could set up your entire, th this whole process is not difficult. This this process of ingesting the data set and training a model is really not that difficult. Um, as long as you have a data set and you have ground truth data, you can train an ML model pretty um, pretty quickly. So I won't go through the same um, the same process, but the process would repeat for above. And then eventually what we would have is we would have an endpoint which is served again, like we did for the uh, the the video detection module. We would serve that model as a REST API. And then we would be able to now answer this question. Is this audio systematically generated? And we would get our prediction. Prediction based on the prediction, we can identify whether it is. And if it is, we can plus one to deep fake. We could then go to make our actual final decision, which is a very simple formula. Basically adding these up and seeing if it's greater than uh, greater than or equal to two. And if so, yes, we've now successfully identified a spoof. And this is how you would build this entire application from scratch. Um, and I'm not talking about you know the second or third version. I'm really talking about the first version. What is the first thing you can do to get this type of thing to market? And if you look at this, really, this is your entire job. This whole piece in the middle is uh, your entire job. To, to architect, um, all the customer cares about is they have a video, they need a result on whether this is a spoof. They don't care about this logic, they don't care about that, um, but you have to care about that when developing a solution uh, for, for something like this. But essentially, this is how we would architect the solution. Um, then we have, for example, now we think about, okay, why, how can actually a customer use this type of solution in production? Well, I can think of a way where we have, uh, let's just make this, and this font a bit bigger. We can say customers original, original process. Now, now the, the way I like to think about it is actually map out Let's take a um, let's take a bank for example. Let's say digital bank because I've seen actually a lot of digital banks do this. Um, they have their standard onboarding process. So let's say 
Um, user wants to sign up to Digital Bank. This is their current process now. That, pro that user now has to go through a authentication process. Authentication process. User records. Um, in fact, actually, instead of signing up, let's try something else which might be a bit more risky. User has forgotten their password. I've actually seen this type of flow work in action where to actually authenticate, um, the user has to record a video of them saying uh, three words something like that and then the bank runs its authentication process bank runs authentication process and then allows user to log back in now, the issue with the current process is, as uh, Anikat mentioned, this whole process is very, very, it's done like right now, just because banks, their whole business model is not detecting deep fakes. You have to also realize that they're not in the business of detecting deep fakes. They're in the business of serving, providing a digital bank to customers. Um, I'm not sure why this is. Uh, yeah, there we go. They're, they're in the, the entire process of, of serving um, serving users on their, their digital process. So there, there is a massive need to improve this authentication process. If they don't, it's costing them lots of dollars because they have to file for uh, customers will sue them for breaching authentication processes and things like that. So there is a big need to improve this type of process. So instead of it running through the authentication process, we could actually do something like this. We could change the customer's process to detect whether this video is a spoof. And now you also have to think about how would a customer use this? Like, how do you how do you say to the customer, it's not just about your solution. It doesn't matter if you have, let's say, 99% accuracy. You need to make it really easy for customers to, to actually use the solution. So that is why you should always, and in this kind of type of use case, I would be a massive fan of deploying a, deploying a REST API to upload a video. So you could say to a customer, hey, like instead of your current authentication process, let's break that. It's costing you money. You're actually losing out of money due to, to fraudulent transactions. Let's break this process and let's, re re let's replace it with a new one where I've deployed a REST API to allow you to detect uh, whether something is, a video is a spoof or not. So now the new process goes to the REST API. What does the REST API do? This uploads the video. Let's just uh, draw a messy diagram here. One popular way of actually doing this is uploading uploading uh, the video to Azure Blob Storage. Hello. Hi, Adika. Did, did you have a uh, question? I want to make this tool to detect real-time calling and video calling. Yes, so you can make this real-time. Uh, 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 oh, real-time calling, do you mean? OK, so then what you could do instead of a REST API, what we could do is we can have a WebSocket stream. So if you have, let's say, real time video of user. We can have a video stream a WebSocket. And this WebSocket will stream. Are you familiar with uh, WebSockets, Annika? No. OK, a WebSocket, think of a WebSocket as a tunnel that's opened between two systems. And it allows for bi-directional data flow. 
So through a WebSocket, we can constantly send where essentially what we're doing here is we're sending frame one of the video, frame two, frame three. That's how a WebSocket is working. It's essentially streaming a bunch of frames uh, from a real time video of a user. And it's also returning. It's also returning detection results. So it's also returning here. Uh, results back to back to the stream. So I'm going to actually put in a another uh, shape here. Real time results. And those results could be in JSON form. So you could have, let's say, something like this real time, like WebSocket results in JSON of deep fake. And this could be either yes or no. So in real time, you're streaming, you're streaming frames via WebSocket. Those frames are essentially hitting your platform um <clears throat> if you if you want to do real-time video detection i would suggest instead of ingesting the whole data set i would suggest ingesting frames and training a model to detect whether a frame is a deep fake deep fake or not the same for audio um or you, what you could do one thing that's quite popular is you could have a um you could have a queue which which collects Q, which uh, collects X amount of frames before running this through inference. So we can say um, collect 10 frame, collect a 10 frame window before running this. And this is actually quite, this is a common practice to do. If you are doing real time detection, it's always best practice to collect a window of frames so you can actually construct that into a video um, and run that through your inference pipeline that pipeline would give you whether this is yes a spoof or not and those results would stream directly back to the websocket so in this architecture you have a real time and again if we're not talking about user logging in we're just talking about real time video of user you have a real time feed of whether deep fake is present or not. So yes or no. Uh, and you can stream that via WebSocket object. Uh, and this is how generally from a high level, how your architecture would look like. You'd have real time video of user. You'd have a WebSocket stream that streaming frame. And also, by the way, this is just frames. This is for video, but also streaming. but also streaming audio sample. Right, and so your, your frames and, and you'd have a bunch of frames, you have a bunch of audio samples, you collect them in a window. So collect a, call it a 10 sample window before running this through inference. Once we have 10 sample window, we reconstruct the video of that person talking, break them into a video and audio, run the detection using our pre-trained models which are now served via rest api we get our predictions for both both video and audio which is great by the way i don't think i don't think both video and audio is done um when we're talking about deep fake generated uh videos i don't think both video and audio is, is is done um as well so this is great run this through our pipeline we can plus one for deep fake a very simple logic. If we are getting a deep fake on a bunch of windows, let's say we've got a, a 10 frame window and we're sampling at one frame per second, right? We've got 10 seconds, a 10, we've just sampled a 10 second clip, run that through our inference and we can detect, yes, this is a spoof. We feed that back and we say, yes, this is a spoof. And you could then feed that back to whoever you're serving, whichever customer you're serving. Result. But essentially, from the customers from the customers' point of view, it's very simple. They're just sending a real-time video through a WebSocket stream. That's it. 
and they can probably they could let's say for example you could um if i'm just thinking about how you price this you could price this for example customer can pay per websocket session whatever that value is <laughs> and so all the customer needs to do is access your websocket stream with an and you can generate an authentication key for this auth key they can pay per websocket session to you this goes back directly into your bank account bank account and you have a entire architecture which allows you to detect deep fakes or not based on multimodal input which is both video and audio and that is generally how you can architect a solution very quickly. I mean, you should try, always try and name. I always try and name. If you have an idea, try and get something done in two weeks. And it is, it sounds unreasonable, but it is possible. And this is really the way that you can start experimenting with customers, um, understanding how much actually a value. You might realize that you're charging $1 per WebSocket session. But actually, your 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 inference is saving them ten dollars a session because for every session that they they save or, or they catch a deep fake on, they've saved a bunch of money. Um, so you might realize actually you should be charging more for that. But getting to that experimental stage with a customer is really where the magic happens. That is, your customer will give you insights that you would have never thought of before, and that really is the key um the key to, to building a successful product um but again look how easy it is from the customer's point of view it is to serve they just need to interface with the websocket stream the websocket stream does all of the work all of the work here to actually do deep fake detection and then generate a result and they can simply pay per websocket session so i hope i know we're running out of time here and uh, I know, unfortunately, we only got to, to run through one idea. Um, I will, Anika, send this to you. Like, if you want me to send this this flowchart to you via email, happy yes, to yes. do that. But 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 really, like the the whole point I'm trying to stress. And if I just go back to, um, I know we're running out of time, so I do want to give you guys a chance to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, the whole point I'm trying to stress is that there's already so much on Azure which you can use to get an unfair advantage to get to market as soon as possible. Use also open source repos, open source data sets whenever you get a chance to build a solution and make it really easy for a customer to interface with your solution, whether it's via West REST API or via WebSocket session. Um, I'm not an expert in the deep fake area, um, but I have built a computer vision company before, so I, I know exactly how to, to architect this type of stuff. Um, but the whole the whole point is that it should be simple. And if you have an idea, you should be able to get something ready in two weeks by leveraging Azure. So I hope that was helpful.